God bless everybody. Good to be back once again. This is the Shareholders Podcast. Monty Mont here, man, and God has God has been doing some great things. This is on the Mighty Sharp Network, and I have an amazing guest here on today. Now, I want to first set it up. Uh, by now, you've heard at least my podcast with Jay, uh, Jay Trains. Excellent, excellent uh, podcast, and got to have him back on again. If you remember, I said that me and him, we met at Shades of Hell Summit. Mm -hmm. And I went to that summit, basically, it was really kind of just in faith. <laughs> and um, I didn't know what to expect, but somebody had talked about it. And I said, well, let me just check it out. And before I went to Shades of Hell, I was just going to do my music podcast, which I hope you guys are subscribing to as well, I'm checking that out on the network. But when I went there, I saw so many amazing people <clears throat> speaking and talking and things like that. And I said, wow, I really, let me do something that's about entrepreneurs as well. And that's how the shareholders podcast even came about. So, you know, old money mind, I just, I tell y'all step out on faith. So the funny thing is I booked, you know, and, and paid to go paid my little ticket. And that was maybe like on a Wednesday. I think the summer was on a Saturday. Mm -hmm. And I did not realize till I pulled up to the event that it said, it's kind of had a slant for women <laughs> and not till then. And so I'm in the parking lot. I'm all right. I'm suited and booted. I'm ready to go. Your boy looking all right. And I said, oh, this is, I was like, oh, Lord. You know, because I'm not trying to be all in the biz. And that seems kind of creepy, you know, man, all up in the women's health thing. I'm not trying to. So, <laughs> so it was at a nice place in town center in Las Vegas here. And, <laughs> and so I'm creeping trying to look and see in there and I can't see. And so a lady came out who I found out later was a caterer. And I said, I said, Hey, is men in there? <laughs> she said, yeah, there's men in there. I was like, are you, are you serious? She said, yeah. And then she got on the phone. So when I came in, I don't know if you remember this, mm -hmm. I saw you at the table <laughs> and I said, is this for men? Cause I don't want to be. And you said, yeah, man. It's... So anyway, that's how I met my guest. And I didn't even know that she was over this, but mm -hmm. Miss Chardé Janine, am I saying that right? Yeah, you are. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the Shareholders Podcast, and thank you so much for coming on. How are you doing today? Thank you. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. This is amazing. And so, again, as I said, I, I had no idea what I was really even getting myself into. I'm just trying to network, <laughs> meet some people, and I'm telling you, the people on that panel, you will see some more of them coming on. You know, I've invited some of y'all. Y'all y'all, didn't miss this wonderful place. I don't know if I can get this no more. <laughs> we might be somewhere else, but... They were excellent, and there was, you know, there was a men's panelist where I, I saw Jay, and, mm -hmm. and then the, the women that spoke, and everybody was really about business. It was just a great feeling. So I want to just start from not the beginning of your life, of course, but mm -hmm. what really inspired you to, quote, unquote, even become an entrepreneur and start putting on things like this? Because you put this on. I did, yes, yeah. Shades of Health was my vision. Um, I partnered with an organization here locally in Vegas, um, and I just really want to bring the two, that I, the two things that I love, women and wellness together. Hmm. I felt like women were, were, we were missing the mark on being educated or the tools and resources for wellness. So mm -hmm. um, I created an event that would fit the modern woman and okay. that's what my first event um, last year kind of was all about. It was strictly pink. <laughs> um, but it was so funny because um, gentlemen like Keith Stark that was on the panel, yes, Keith. he came through and he even said to me too, I know it's a women's event, but, <laughs> and I said, no, I'm so happy to have you here. And that's what kind of inspired us to move forward with the male panel. I feel like the male's perspective is so important and it showed out at that event. It really, it really was great. And I, I did like that, even if they hadn't been on, for the male part, it was mm -hmm. still amazing, but it Thank did you. help just with hearing their perspective. Yeah. So did you have, and we've kind of heard a couple of my guests already talk about that, in kind of doing this uh -huh. and coming upon this, did you have any mentorship, anybody that kind of you leaned upon, like, you know, I, mean, I don't know what I'm doing? Yeah, or, great question. So I think in different levels of your life and business, you have mentors. Mm -hmm. um, at this moment in my life, I'm looking to find a new mentor to level up and see what's next for me. Yeah. Um, the one thing I can say is anyone I meet or come across, I think I take away something from them. Yeah. to apply to my business or my life. Um, so to say I have one mentor would be incorrect. I have multiple mentors. Yeah. But as of right now, I don't have the one I need to take me to the next level. I'm, I'm looking for her. Or that's, her or him. Yeah. Her or him. That's, <laughs> that's okay. So this was your second event. Yeah. Where you, and I know, I, I want to hit on this because I know everybody goes, through this. I've gone through this, uh -huh. doing this. How nervous were you like the first time? <laughs> like, oh my God. It like, was, I mean, our first event, we did it for free. 
yeah. um, just to kind of see what the turnout would be. Um, and of course, you want to you don't want to get there and no one show up. <laughs> so right. it, you are nervous. I think it's just the idea of um, doing something new in the community because this wasn't introduced before. Yeah. I think a lot of my organizations, the, peop- the businesses I run were something new that I wanted to have in the community. Mm-hmm. So starting anything new is going to be a little bit daunting. So, yeah. Yeah. But you still did it. I still know? did. I, yeah, like you said, I stepped out on faith. That's the thing, you know. <laughs> People, there is always a reason not to do something. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, this and this and that. But, Mm -hmm. and then I love the saying that, I love to say this, you know, if it was easy, everybody would do it. There you go. If it was easy. So, uh, you actually took the initiative and did it. So, Mm -hmm. now, I want to kind of encompass everything. Now, you actually have an event thing. You're a marketer and all of that. So, Sade Janine Events. Mm -hmm. What does that all encompass? So, we are a production company that focuses on lifestyle, beauty, and wellness events. So our kind of our slogan is we focus on purposeful events. So if you are um, doing anything in the wellness, beauty, or lifestyle industry, I'm hosting conferences, workshops, seminars for you. That's kind of my wheelhouse when it comes to that organization. Okay, nice, nice. So then Mm -hmm. does that mean then that you're – because I want to break it down even for layman's terms. So then I call you and Mm -hmm. I just say I would like to put on an event. Uh Uh-huh. So then – do you then kind of find me a venue for, I mean, I'm sure you have to talk. Oh. What do you want to do? But so mm-hmm. what are all, I'm just saying, yeah. what are all your powers? Gotcha. <laughs> so with event production, we literally can do everything from find you the venue to find you your sponsors. We can literally oh, do yeah. the whole, the whole kit and caboodle. Yeah. Um, so it literally goes from, from A to Z. That's what event production does. Design, logistics, coordination, hosting, sponsorships, marketing. We can do it all for you. Nice, nice. Okay. Mm-hmm. So then there's Chardet Janine events, but then there's also something that you're connected with, which is called Nourish Wellness. Yeah, so I own Nourish Wellness Center. Um, Nourish actually came from Shades of Health last year. Oh, okay. So when doing that event, I realized there was so much power in that room, and I was like, okay. There needs people need more. They want more information. So we brought all these great business people together last year that had were all over the Vegas Valley, uh-huh. and um, then it's so funny. I had an office that I just had rented, never utilized it. Was planning on doing like a mental health business, but there's a million of those here around Vegas, so uh-huh. I wanted to be different. And I think from Shades of Health, I was like, all right, what do I want? And I know personally, I'm like. I want the stigma of mental health to be taken away mm-hmm. because people are so scared, especially with people of color. Yeah. We go in this whole thing of not being crazy. Um, so I want to remove the stigma of that. I want it to focus on other therapies as well, like holistic therapies, because I love holistic therapy. Um, and then I want to include the body into it, yoga, meditation. So Nourish Wellness Center is like a, a hub of wellness that we, we have Reiki, we have yoga, um, energy healing, we have uh, facials, estheticians, we have, you name it, literally, we have it in this space. Um, and so I'm super proud of where we're coming. We're coming up on our first year anniversary in May. Yeah. Um, so we're growing. We are. We're literally growing from it. And I think it's opened the door to so many different people coming in and saying, I want to learn more about how to further my wellness journey mm-hmm. and not be afraid of it. The conversations right, yes. that we have alone are just phenomenal it was it was really eye-opening just to hear so many different perspectives and things like that now let me ask you something Mm -hmm. about yourself like have you always been like this where trying to find something to do and trying to see okay here's a situation can I make this better is it or is it something that you kind of developed were you more of like a wallflower before this and then just kind (laughs) of bloomed or (laughs) so I'm still a wallflower I'm very much an introvert like I'm very much an introvert and I'm so proud of that um (laughs) but if I see something I will go after I'm a go-getter but I'm an introvert if that makes sense at all (laughs) yeah so I think the two of them that's just who I am (laughs) because I I think what a person would say is oh well you know she could do that because that's her personality. I can't be like that, you nope. know. I and I hate when people put them own selves in kind of a, just pigeonhole themselves yeah. like that, you know. So I'm kind of glad you said you do have an introvert side because mm-hmm. people might see somebody doing something and they just feel like, oh, well, anybody does that, they're just an outgoing person and yep. everybody loves them, and I can't really do that, you yeah. know. And that's that's really what this whole podcast and this 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 thing is about with the shareholders is that mm-hmm. we're trying to let you know that. Don't think because you're this or that or somebody's mm-hmm. labeled you that that you can't still achieve some great things, you know. So that's part of it. So then <clears throat> let me ask you this. I I mean, it's going to kind of be answered in the question, but how mm-hmm. hard is it <clears throat> to really 
put something together from scratch. I mean, we're talking about a lot of work, I would assume. Yeah, you know? it is a lot of work. Um, but it's kind of like my my stress, th- my, sh- my, my therapy, in mm-hmm. a sense. So I've always been a planner. Yeah. Um, I've always been someone that would put projects together. Uh, my sister is a singer, mm-hmm. and it started from even helping her. I love the, we- the reason why I think the introverted side of me has always been a blessing is because I, will, I love to be behind the scenes. Okay. Like, I will handle everything from behind the scenes and yeah. then push you to the front to make it happen. Right. Um, so I think it's, it's just a matter of knowing your strengths and then working on them, you know, honing, you know, honing in on them. Yeah. So, you know, and that is true. Cause like I said, if you would have saw the setup, I saw her first when I came in to the Shades <laughs> of Health Summit and I, I thought she was just working reception. Mm-hmm. And so then later on they said, and you know, give a hand to who's putting it on. And she's back. I said, wait a minute. I was like, why are you not up here with everybody? So you, that is very true. Yeah. Uh, you wouldn't have known she didn't even, even when I talked to her, you know, she wasn't like, well, I'm the ball. So first nope. of all, no, mm-hmm. young man. But <laughs> <laughs> she was really cool and personable about that. So I would like to ask you this then. Mm-hmm. How far do you want to go with this? This is, you know, you just started your second year. It was very yep. successful. You know, I can attest to that. Thank you. How far are we trying to take this thing then? I definitely want us to be an international brand. Um, I definitely want to. We've all we've we've been asked about taking to other locations, so oh, okay. we're looking nice. into that. Nice. Um, and then definitely with Nourish Wellness Center, I'm looking to franchise it eventually. So. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's. I talk. A friend of mine talked about he he does uh, selling on Amazon, mm-hmm. and when he first started, he just was doing video games because that's what he knew was just selling, and yeah. then he started getting in liquidation and all of that. He spoke about, you know, I kind of got my foot in on what I knew, Mm -hmm. but it was important for me to break out of my comfort zone. Yeah. And so can you speak a little bit to that? Because I feel like for you, once you've accomplished a few things, it feels like the way you talk, the sky's the limit. Like somebody could come to you, hey, you want to help me run this used car a lot? If it's right for you, you'd be like, yeah, whatever, I'll do it. (laughs) But (laughs) was there a time when you really felt you had to kind of break out Mm -hmm. of not that you weren't doing things, yeah. but even that, you know, that comfort zone where we feel like, okay, I'm doing this. I don't want to do no more. Oh, yeah. I mean, um, it was my introduction to mental health. Uh-huh. So I'm a marketer. By my full-time position is a, I'm a marketer. Um, and so I've always done marketing for, like, different companies like Konami, um, you know, products or services. I did. Yeah. I did. But then it was um, me getting into the mental health field. Um, and I was like, oh, that's something that's hard to market because I don't even really believe, you know, <laughs> I don't really believe it. I was ignorant to it. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember walking on to my psychiatric unit and being afraid. And it wasn't until I looked at people and I'm like, oh, that she looked like me. He looked like <laughs> it was like, wow, we literally are all, I guess, one breakdown away from <laughs> ending up. So it was more like, how do I take this hard, difficult situation and turn it to where it's more about education and light? And my, my angle for it was, how do I educate my people, my friends, my, my, my constituents on mental health and how you need to get that therapy. You need mm-hmm. to get that process, whatever you're dealing with. And you're not crazy for thinking <laughs> no. yeah, little things of that sort. So I think that was kind of one of my biggest comfort zones where I had to break out of because I literally was like, I came into it so ignorant. Yeah. And, and most people don't really understand it. And I think we're having more awareness now because yeah. we see with autism yeah. and Asperger's and things like that to where at probably 30 years ago, people would just say, OK, well, something wrong. With him. Yeah. Just put him in a class, whatever. Yeah. And we don't <laughs> understand. And I think we're understanding, especially with the spectrum. I used to yep. work with a lady who her son was whatever the furthest spec part of autism was, was him. Mm. And she said he's he's constantly under our care and all of that. She Mm -hmm. said he's as far, but then, you know, I've known some people that have it, but function and be fine. And so just educating people, even of just what it is, you know, people didn't even understand what it was. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I was in school, you know, you just, you know, special education, we just put everybody there. No, you're right. You're you're right. And didn't really understand it. So it is, it is in, like you say, especially in our culture with African-Americans, it is really something to at least understand. And you, you, they're still learning. We're still figuring things out, but, to recognize even with the signs they talk about with babies and children yeah. and things like that. So mm-hmm. uh, definitely beneficial. I would like to ask you then, mm-hmm. how important do you feel what you're doing is mm-hmm. for women and especially young women to see somebody like you mm-hmm. kind of, and I don't, I don't want to just be like running things, but you know <laughs> what I mean? But really a woman that is putting things together in charge and especially a woman of color. Thank you. Oh, so, well, okay. I, I think it's very important because I want people, women, women and young people in general to know that 
your voice matters. Yeah. You know, your vision <clears throat> matters. What you believe in is 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 important. And um, I think a big thing for me is that they, they can look at me and say, wow, she was an introvert wallflower, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> yeah. um, and was able to step out of her comfort zone and put these businesses on together. Mm-hmm. I can do it too. Like I hate social media. I hate live. You will not see me on there. If I, if I don't have, if I don't have to, I won't do it, but still you're able to move forward. So, yeah. um, I think it's just important to you for you to focus on what God's given you that vision and understand that he's giving you everything you need to move forward with yes. it. And you got to stop doubting yourself and just move forward. So if I can be an inspiration to one female, yes, one male, whatever it may be, I've done my job. So that, that is, that is really important. Again, honestly, at maybe some point I would have, but we sure wouldn't be here today mm-hmm. if you hadn't done that shades of hell summit, because that really inspired me. I said, man, I saw so many people wow. with that entrepreneurial spirit yep. and I said, man, I, let me just see if I can do something, do my part, you know. So wow. what you've done is a reflection even on me because I was just going to do my little music thing. and yep. man, we get, But this is really – so I really salute you for that. Now, let me ask you then, in terms of – I kind of want to ask every guest this. Mm-hmm. But what do you really feel success is, even in your life or just in general? What is success? Um, so I kind of go piggyback off what my dad said on the panel at Shades of Health. Is leaving. And your dad was excellent as <laughs> well. I, I forgot to say that he was really good. Pop, yes. come on through. You know, he will. He, he will. Dad. He loves to talk. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's what what success to me is knowing that my legacy is good. You know, yeah. um, I love my favorite song by Beyonce. I want mm. my great great grandchildren <laughs> on the Forbes list. You yeah. know, um, but it's truly just making sure I leave a legacy for what I'm doing in this this community. Mm. You know, um, it's not about. I mean, of course, you want the trips, you want the the house, you want all that good stuff, but in the end, I just want to break generational curses and yeah. um, my children to be good. That is, okay, see, now you about to, you said generational curses, mm-hmm. and that is something that, and I don't even want to say just for people of color, I feel for oh yeah, everybody, mm-hmm. you know, you've heard, you know, there's stories of families where, man, it seems like every guy ended up in jail yeah. or, you know, alcoholism and things like that, mm-hmm. or just, and it seems, it seems to run through bloodlines, and it just, I feel like things that you're doing, things that other people have their panel and a lot of people are really trying to you don't have to go that way yeah you know to mm-hmm. break a generational curse you know even biblically there were times where someone finally rose up mm-hmm. and said no you know this has to stop mm-hmm. and it, and and once they do other people gravitated there toward that so yeah you know man that, that's almost a segment i want to do just the generational curse breakers you know one. what i mean but <laughs> i love that and so speaking again real quick when you when you want to put something on mm-hmm. and you get inspired, are mm-hmm. there things I should say, are there things that you're, you, you feel I need to be more educated in this before I do this? Are there things you kind of have a couple of maybe more ideas that right now is not the good time, mm-hmm. you know, and you're waiting on, you know, you have any more endeavors in you that you feel right now you. I'm just, always working on something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. always working on something. Um, and I think anytime I do anything, I think a part of my personality, and I think as an introvert, mm-hmm. um, you research a lot, right? Yes. You look into stuff. So if I, before I come and speak on anything, I want to make sure I'm confident in it. Mm-hmm. Um, if that's in marketing, that's in um, my 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 organizations that I have, my businesses. I want to make sure before I go and speak to anyone, mm-hmm. I'm I'm confident with what I'm saying. And without I have to, what to, more of me to do that, I have to actually read up on it, look into it, and research it. Yeah. Um, so I believe anything I do, I research it. That's that's really good mm-hmm. because. You don't want to, I, even for me, it's funny because if you notice these mics, I see these mics, I saw them on a breakfast club mm-hmm. and I saw them on a couple of different places. It's like, man, you know, I kind of like those. Yeah. And, I, and I, I really, cause I do music and things like that. I'm really about the audio being right. Mm-hmm. And you know, me, I just, it's like, where, where are these? Let me find out. And yeah. I, I want to know, you know what, because I just feel like I always hear really smart people and rich people say, you know, don't be the smartest person in the room. Yeah. Be yep. able to learn something from somebody else. So, yep. you know, if you remember, if, for those who remember my old show, we just had some handhelds. We was doing the best we can. But I said, <laughs> man, if they got that, what a, you know. And so that's just me. And mm-hmm. I feel like people like you always are open to learning and always oh, yeah. open to, man, let me just figure out. And so you say the research part. So yeah. anybody that's setting out to do something, don't feel like you can't ask for help. Don't feel like oh, you yeah. can't, you know, hey, how you doing this and that. That's been my huge model for mm-hmm. that. So, uh, lastly, I want to ask you then: mm-hmm. Are you do you have any? You know, I love to read. So, any mm-hmm. books, anything you've read lately that? 
Oh, uh, that's a great question. Um, I think I'm, I started rereading The Year of Yes by Shonda, Shonda okay. Rhimes. And yeah. that, I read a couple years ago, but um, now it's a different concept for me. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think I, that's my most recent book. I have to get back into reading. I've just yeah. been doing so much. It's kind of hard, hard to yeah. sit down and read a book. The but. most <laughs> reading I do is usually when I'm on a plane. When yeah. I, yep. I don't sleep well on planes, so I love to read. Mm-hmm. And I'm in the airport. I get, I get a lot done for that. Okay, so The Year of Yes by mm-hmm. Shonda Rhimes. I like that. Yeah. I want to say thank you so much for coming, and we want a sis to come on with sis. And we're gonna get sis next time. She's here, but we <laughs> we'll get her next time. But this has been amazing, and please, right now, give your plugs. I know you, okay. you're not doing a whole lot of social media, but mm-hmm. still, where people can find you. Or well, no, I have all the social media set yeah. up. It's just not you won't see me <laughs> you on it. See me out there much. <laughs> um, so my personal Instagram page is Sharde Janine S H A R D E J A N I N E. Um, you can find my business page at Nourish Wellness LV um, and then Shades of Health Summit. So mm-hmm. those are my two pages you can actually visit. Oh, and Sade Janine Events, which yes, is yes. spelled Check out a long way. I'm sorry. <laughs> and you know what? One more thing because we yeah. brought your father up. Uh huh. And he, your father is actually a sports doc. I want to say just on. <laughs> what is he again? <laughs> so he, you know what? He's everything. Um, he's he's for sure, I say, a, law, a life coach, an author, yes, um, and yes. definitely a mentor for sure for the the athletes in a sense. He's always been like a community dad. Mm -hmm. I mean, my dad literally is the dad of like multiple people growing up back home. (laughs) So everyone know either coach, dad or uncle Rory. That's like, so so. how, so seeing that growing up Uh and as, as much as he did, how how do you feel that's affected you and what you're doing now? Tremendously. I mean, between him, my brother, I mean, I think our whole entire family, we've always been held to a high regard in regards to exceeding our goals. Um, I mean, he, my dad was like president of NAACP, which made me become wow. the president of the state, the vice president of the state for the youth of NAACP when I was younger. Wow. Okay. But it was just that pushing of making sure that you're doing the best you can and getting out awesome. there. Awesome. Awesome. So, yeah. Awesome. And that that really helps. And listen, I know some people, you know, different circumstances. Maybe your family situation is not, but that's why we talked about generational curses. Yeah. You know, be the first one. Then you know, it's a blessing. I my father, of course, has been a legacy for me. My grandfather, but. You can be the one to start that, That's you know, right. and and don't feel like, well, man, okay, they both had their fathers, so I can't. Don't I just don't want any excuses for people. You yeah, know what I mean, be the one to start that. So, Miss Charde, thank you so much. Thank you. It really these first couple of shows, I really appreciate the guests because even with my podcast, once it got rolling, it was easy to get people, but it's hard, you know, because she don't know me like that, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I came to the thing, but she was so nice to come on and Jay and thank all, you. and I really appreciate it. Coming on the Shareholders Podcast, do know this. This will not be your only time. You will be coming back because um, I welcome that. glad yeah. to show you some love. Check her out. She is a sweet person, really nice in what she's doing. <clears throat> I hope to see a lot of you more at the mm-hmm. next Shades of Health event that she puts on. I will definitely be shouting out for her on that. Thank, Thank you guys for tuning in. Please give us a like or subscribe. All right, Mighty Sharp Networks. we got a couple of different shows that we're coming out with. As always, stay sharp. Thank you. Thank you so much. (laughs) Man, that was excellent.